born Theodore David Musgrave, Sr. Ted Musgrave was born on December 18, 1955, in Waukegan, Illinois. Ted's father, Elmer, was a short track racer for over 25 years. He raced in the Midwest at places like Soldier Field, O'Hare, and other tracks around the Midwest before moving on to paved tracks in both ASA and ARCA. Later, Musgrave's father would stop racing and focus on getting Ted and his older brother Tom's racing career started. Ted began racing in 1977 when he ended up getting a hand-me-down 1967 Ford Galaxy. He rebuilt the race car into a Ford Torino and he ended up winning Rookie of the Year award at the racetrack in walking in 1977. Turns out the Musgraves built a Ford Mustang after getting tips from short track legend Dick Trickle to run that next season in 1978. So, by 79, Ted had become a regular on the Central Wisconsin Tour, or CWRA, finishing 7th in points that season. Musgrave was from Illinois, so he was forced to move across the state line that was near him, <clears throat> so that he could race five nights a week in the CWRA. He ran at Grundy County Speedway, La Crosse, and State Park Speedway, just to name a few different tracks. He ran in his local area. In 1980, Musgrave was able to finish second in points. Wisconsin International Raceway, behind eventual Cup Series champion Alan Kowicki. In 1982, Musgrave was able to secure the victory at Capitol Speedway, nowadays Madison International Speedway, in the Holiday 50. The following season, in 83, Musgrave was able to win 10 CWRA feature events, including the Holiday 50 for the second year in a row, and the Triple Hot Dog Dash, as well as the Race of Champions at Capitals October Nationals. He was also able to qualify the quickest five times in a row, as well as he was leading the point standings when he was injured. Uh, he actually injured his wrist in a, in a wreck. Now, even with the injury, he did not miss, miss any on-track action. As he came back the following week in a cast and an apparatus to help him support his arm in the race car. Now, Ted ended up finishing that season in third in points. In 84, Musgrave's short track success, success continued as he was able to win 13 feature events this season. Seven at Capitol, two at Lacrosse, two at State Park, and two at Wisconsin Dells. Sadly, in 85, Ted ran out of funds for his race team prior to the conclusion of the 85 season. In 1986, Musgrave was able to return with a new race car and several new experimental setups underneath it. He was able to finish 10th in points, even though he started his year more than a month after everyone else. He also was able to find his way back to Victory Lane in several feature events that season, including the Firecracker 100 at Capitol. The following year, Musgrave was able to land an ASA ride. Musgrave got this chance after Bobby Dodder left the Terry Baker team. He finished 21 out of 25 events and was able to score the victory on the Milwaukee Mile and at Birmingham, as well as in Huntsville. Ted was able to finish 5th in points and earned Rookie of the Year in honors that season. In 1988, Musgrave continued to run the ASA Series for Terry Baker. The team was again competitive with Ted finding victory lane at Winchester Speedway. Also, Ted was able to win the 1988 ASA Snowball Derby in the Baker Enterprises number seven, number 97 Chevrolet. Finally, in 89, Ted made his Xfinity Series debut at Charlotte Motor Speedway, driving a number 98 Buick for himself with G&G &G Trucking as a sponsor. 
He started 31st, and he actually finished 12th. He ran one more race the following week at Rockingham, starting 24th and finishing 17th. Though Musgrave did start out the year driving the number 98, Wedner Automotive Chevrolet, the first two races of the season at Daytona and Atlanta, starting 7th and 37th, he finished 9th and 8th. He did try to qualify but missed the field a couple races later at Talladega. In 1990, Ted was asked by Cup Series team owner Ray DeWitt to replace Rich Volger, who had been killed, sadly, just with just over a lap to go in a USAC sprint car race at Salem Speedway. Now, Volger was set to make his Cup Series debut at Pocono Raceway, but DeWitt had Ted take Volger's place driving for the team as Volger was set to run a partial schedule ahead of running a full-time schedule for the team in the Cup Series in 1991. Well, Musgrave made his Cup Series debut at Michigan in the number 50 Auto Value Chevrolet, starting 24th and finishing 39th. Then he ran the final three races of the 89 season. One race in the number 50 and two races in the number 2. Best start was 25th. Best finish, 22nd. Also, both of them came to Phoenix. Now, <clears throat> this coming in, that came in 1990. For 1991, the 1991 season began, and so did Ted Musgrave's career as a full-time driver in the Cup Series. He drove for D.K. Ulrich and Ray DeWitt's number 55 Pontiac. The team was able to qualify for all 29 races that season. Starting at race 19 in Michigan, the team picked up Jasper Engines as a full-time primary sponsor. The team's best start was 15th at Michigan, and their best finish was 12th at Bristol in the spring. Overall, the team scored 0 top 5s and 0 top 10s. They were able to finish 23rd in final point standings. Musgrave ended up finishing runner-up to Bobby Hamilton for Rookie of the Year honors in 1991. The following season, in 92, the team was fortunate enough to pick up Buddy Parrott as crew chief. The team's statistics definitely did improve in 92. The best start, 13th, twice, at North Brooksboro and Talladega. The best finish, a fifth, at Pocono. Overall, the team scored one top five and seven top tens. Another impressive accomplishment uh, was that <clears throat> he and the team in 1992 <laughs> is that he led all drivers in the Cup Series and lots completed. Now, they also improved to finish 18th in Final Cup Series points. In 1993, the team was able to qualify for all but the fall race at Bristol. Best start was 4th in Atlanta. And his best finish was fifth twice at Michigan and Pocono. Overall, the team was able to score two top fives and five top tens on the way to finishing 25th in final point standings. At season's end, Musgrave left the DeWitt Alcord team. For the following season, in 1994, Musgrave was hired to drive the number 16 Family Channel sponsored Ford with a best start of first three times. At Richmond, both races, that season, and Martinsville, with the best finish of fifth in Phoenix. Overall, the team scored three poles, zero wins, one top five, and eight top tens. The 16 also brought Robin Pemberton in at race 16 at Loudoun as crew chief. Musgrave and the team in 1994 and 13th in final points. Then 95. Ted, again, was behind the wheel of the Roush Racing number 16 Family Channel Ford, full-time in the Cup Series. He did run one Craftsman Truck Series race for Jack Roush's number 61 Ford at Phoenix, starting and finishing fourth. He ran one Xfinity Series race for Roush Racing's number 9 Action Performance Ford at Charlotte, starting 34th 
and finishing 14th. Musgrave wasn't able to score his first career Cup Series victory, but he was very close a couple times. With the best start of first at North Wilkesboro in the fall, and the best finish of second twice at Pocono and at Martinsville. Overall, the team scored one pole, zero wins, seven top fives, and 13 top ten finishes. At one point, Musgrave was as high as third in the Cup Series points, but by season's end, they had felt fallen back to finish the season seventh in final point standings. Next up was 1996, and the team added Prime Star as one of their primary sponsors. Statistically, the team cooled off a bit from 95, but still found some success. Ted ran two more truck races for Jack Roush in the Exide Batteries number 99 Ford. He ran at Phoenix and Las Vegas with a best start, ninth at Las Vegas, and the best finish was fifth at Phoenix. Musgrave was able to sit on the pole for the final Cup Series race that they would have at North Woodsboro until the 2023 All-Star race. His best start was first at North Wilkesboro, like we said, and his best finish was third at Richmond in the spring. Overall, the team scored one pole, zero wins, two top fives, and seven top tens. They ended up finishing the year in 16th in final point standings. For 1997, Musgrave ran two Xfinity Series races. One race in Doug Taylor's MHCO USA number 44 at Darlington, starting 19th and finishing 12th. Then, the other Xfinity Series race he ran for Jack Roush in the track year number 9 for Talladega, starting 21st and finishing 36th. In Cup, he ran full-time in Roush Racing's number 16 Family Channel Prime Star Ford again this season. With the best start, third at Bristol, and his best finish was second at Darlington. Overall, the team statistically improved a little bit this season, over 97, with five top fives and eight top tens. In his final Cup in Final Cup Series points, they ended up in 12th position by season's end. Now in 1998, things really started to change for Musgrave. He ran the first 20 races for Jack Roush in that number 16 Ford, until suddenly he was replaced by Kevin LePage. Ted was, it, was still able to run all the races in the 90, 98 Cup Series season, all but one, by running... Part-time for Bud Moore and Bill Elliott Racing in the number 13 he and Dave Marino co-owned. He also subbed for the for in the number 23 Travis Carter team and also for the number 77 Jasper Motorsports team. In the number 16, he scored one top five and four top tens. Best finish best start eighth at Pocono and his best finish was second at Martinsville. And his two starts in the number 15 for Bud Moore. He started 32nd both times. In Michigan and in Darlington. And his best finish was 39th, Michigan. In his one race each for the number 23, Travis Carter, Bristol, he ran, he started 6th and he finished 20th. For Buzz McCall's number 96 in Richmond, Musgrave started 17th and finished 25th. He ran one race at Martinsville behind the wheel of the Jasper Motorsports number 77, starting 9th and finishing 15th. Then he also ran seven races for the Elliott Marino number 13, first plus financial Ford. His best start was 10th, and his best finish was 5th, both coming at Phoenix. Overall, Musgrave was able to score two top fives and five top tens en route to a 23rd place finish in the final Cup Series point standings. In 1999, Musgrave did attempt four races in the Xfinity Series, only able to qualify for one race at Rockingham. Starting 12th and finishing 17th in Gary Bechtel's Pet Boys No. 29 Chevrolet. On the Cup Series side of things, he was able to find a full-time Cup Series ride behind the wheel of the Remington Arms No. 75 Ford from Butch Mock. The team qualified for 32 out of 34 minutes. This is Las Vegas, in the season finale in Atlanta. Best start was 2nd at Martinsville. Best finish, 7th at Bristol in the spring. He ended up finishing 33rd in Final Cup Series points. At the end of the season, Musgrave quit the number 75 team. Ted started the 2000 Cup Series season without a ride with the number 60 power team 
car owned by Joe Bessie had him start driving their car at race two in Rockingham. Ted ran the number 60 for five races. Last race coming in Bristol in the spring. His best start was 28th in Las Vegas and his best finish was 16th in Rockingham. Musgrave returned to Bud Moore's number 15 for the race in, Ro in Talladega in the spring starting 29th and finishing 35th. He also attempted the Coca-Cola 600 but missed the field in that number 15. Starting at race 19 in, in, in Pocono, Musgrave took over the number 01, formerly the number 42, driven by Kenny Irwin Jr. until he suffered a life-ending accident in Loudoun. He also took over the number 82 Channel Lock Chevrolet in the Xfinity Series for nine races at the end of the 2000 season. His best start was ninth twice at IRP in Richmond, and his best finish was eighth at Charlotte. In Cup in 01, he qualified for 12 out of, the, out of the 14 races. His best start was 11th, ironically, at Loudoun, and his best finish was 13th in Darlington. In 2001, Musgrave made the decision to find a ride in the Craftsman Truck Series. He ended up landing a ride in the Ultra Motorsports Mopar Performance Number no. 1 Dodge. Finally, Musgrave was able to find victory lane and won a NASCAR's top three touring series, winning three out of the first five races in 2001. His best start was first, twice, in Mesa Martin and Gateway. His best finish was first seven times at Homestead, Mesa Martin, Gateway, Milwaukee, South Boston, Las Vegas, and Fontana. Overall, he scored two poles, seven wins, 13 top fives, and 18 top tens, en route to, a, to second and final Truck Series points. He did make one Cup Series start for Truck Series owner Jim Smith in the nation's rent number 7 Ford at Pocono, starting 15th and finishing 29th. Along came 2002, and Musgrave continued his success with team owner Jim Smith in his number one Mopar Performance Dodge truck. His best start was first four times. South Boston, Michigan, Martinsville, and Daytona. His best finish was first three times. Darlington, Fontana, and Dover. Overall, he scored four poles, three wins, 12 top fives, and 16 top tens. Again, he was in competition for the championship in 02, but had to settle for third. Musgrave also ran a second car for Ultra Motorsports. The number 07, Satellite... Sirius Satellite Radio Dodge. He was able to attempt five races in that 07, but missed all. But missed the race at Phoenix. His best start was 19th in Martinsville, and his best finish was 16th at Homestead. He also ran one race for Petty Enterprises in Cup in the number 44 in Atlanta, starting 39th and finishing 28th. 2003. That. Yeah. It was up from 20, up to 25 from 22 races that season. Shockingly, Musgrave was able to qualify in the top 10 for every single race that season. His best start was first four times, and, and his best finish was first three times. Memphis, Fontana, and Charlotte. Overall, the team scored four poles, three wins, 14 top fives, and 18 top tens. On their way to finishing third in final points. After Jimmy Spencer got suspended for the Bristol race weekend, following an altercation between he and Kurt Busch, Musgrave was asked by both Jim Smith and Tommy Baldwin to fill in for Spencer in the Xfinity and Cup Series. Baldwin owned the Food City No. 6 Dodge in the Xfinity Series, Musgrave in the Xfinity Series. Musgrave performed well, starting ninth and finishing third. On the Cup side, he start, started a strong seventh, but faded to finish 31st. He did attempt two other Cup races in that number 07, for Ultra Motorsports, but missed the field for both Las Vegas and Indy. Turns out that in 2003, this, he ended up running his final Cup Series race. Musgrave did. And also, turns out he was running with bladder cancer. Really sad. In 2004, Ted was again behind the wheel of Jim Smith's number one Mopar Dodge. Another strong season by Ted and the team. Best start first twice in Milwaukee and Texas. Best finish first twice in Milwaukee and Richmond. Overall, the team was able to score two poles, two wins, 11 top fives, and 16 top tens. For a third year in a row, he finished third in points. Musgrave also made one Xfinity Series start in, in the Dodge-sponsored number 86 Dodge, owned by Steve Andre. 
at Richmond. He started 11th, but faded to finish 34th. After experiencing overeating issues, Musgrave, now in his fifth season with the same truck series team, started 2005 off right, finishing no worse than 7th in the first five events. His best start was first a gateway, and his best finish was first also a gateway. Now overall, statistically, his numbers started to slip a little bit, but somehow he was able to secure his first championship. Oddly, after winning the championship the prior season, Ultra Motorsports closed its doors at the conclusion of that 2005 season. So Musgrave moved over to Jermaine Racing, and their number 9 ASE Team ASE Toyota. Best start, second twice at Mansfield and Gateway. His best finish was second three times, Las Vegas, Martinsville, and Gateway. This was the first season since starting racing in the Craftsman Truck Series full-time that he went all season without a pole or a victory. Overall, he scored no wins, 10 top 5s, and 13 top 10s on his way to finishing 6th in final point standings. His teammate, Todd Benign, was able to win his first Truck Series championship. Musgrave also got, got the opportunity to run 5 Xfinity Series races for Armando Fitz. 2007, he returned full-time for Jermaine Racing. Musgrave got suspended for one race after hitting Kelly Byers when he got mad at him, and he hit him under caution. He was fine in part to dock points. This also marked the first time in truck series history that a driver had been suspended from a race. Nonetheless, he was able to score his first and what turned out to be his only and last career victory. His only career victory for Jermaine Racing. His best start was third twice, Texas and Martinsville. His best finish was first in Texas. Overall, the team scored one win in seven top fives and 15 top tens, on the way to finishing seventh and final points. For the 2008 season, Jermaine Racing did not renew Musgrave's contract. So, he took the ASC sponsorship to Harris Trucking. Well, he and Harris Trucking ended up running the first 18 races, but they ended up part ways, um... And they ended up only having six top tens. Best finish was six. And it, it was sad. Um, he tried to come back and he, he ran the season opener for Billy Balu in 2010. Uh, he started 18th, finished 31st after getting caught up in a first lap crash. It was sad. After 305 cup starts, five poles, 55 top tens. 192 truck series starts, 12 poles, 17 wins, 1 championship, and 119 top 10s. The short track racer from the Midwest sure did build quite the racing resume. Well, that's been this edition of NASCAR Underdogs, Ted Musgrave. Thanks for watching, everyone, and take care.